this has really come to fruition by the committee that has been appointed to take a look at our DPW um, and what is needed down here to make it a better place for our workers to work and the flow and taking care of our, our town. Um, long overdue, uh, we don't have a big enough facility down here to take care of everything, so this is what they're doing and we have a great committee that uh, has been formed that has taken this all in. They're doing an open house today on this day so everybody can see where your town taxes have gone for many equipments that have been bought. So we need a place to put them, to take care of them, so they can work on them, wash them down after having them out in the ice and the storm. So this is where we're at today. The facility isn't big enough to fit all the equipment in. In the winter, in the summer, big deal. You put the equipment outside. Okay, it sees the sun, that's not a big deal. But in the winter, um, the biggest one of the problems is a lot of equipment has to be stored outside. It'll start, they're all diesels, but you just can't get into a diesel, start the engine, and drive away. They're cold, especially if it's sub-zero. They've got to warm up for 10, 15 minutes. That's wasted time, wasted fuel, and people are basically trying to get the things going, and hopefully they all start. If they don't start, because it's so cold, there's, that's another whole story. We need to replace it. We need to update it. We need to bring it up to code, up to standards. Um, we need to cover all of these expensive uh, capital requests that the town was so gracious to support last year, all of these vehicles. We have to protect them. We have to be able to wash them appropriately. So the, the need is exactly what we're doing, trying to do a phased approach so that the town can manage these expenses, then we, we cannot just keep kicking it down the road. town garage was built behind most holy redeemer church that was probably built in about the 1940s i'm guessing it was a bunch of uh, it was a little wooden structure and back in the 40s it served the town well back then it was built for uh, pickup trucks small six-wheel dump trucks very small and some tractors and <laughs> in approximately 1970 this garage uh, was designed and built by a building committee and it was designed for, you know, bigger equipment, you know, bigger six-wheel dump trucks, a little bit bigger tractors and stuff like that. Then beginning in about, this was built, I think this was occupied in late 71. And then that's when the town kind of bloomed, for lack of a better term. Um, Route 9 began to get heavily developed. Um, the malls were built, McDonald's was built, and all the, you know, Home Depot and on and on over the next uh, 20, 30 years, it just grew. Um, some several subdivisions, more than several, were built. None of them were overly big, maybe 10, 12 houses, give or take. But when you start getting all those new roads in town, there's a lot more road for the town to take care of. The highway department and the water and sewer became DPW, one big group. Um, all these roads and other things, services, sewer was expanded in uh, that time. Sewer went all the way to North Hadley, through to what they call the intersection of Stockbridge Road and McCreskey's Corner. The uh, town water was expanded all the way to the uh, Hockenham, New South Hadley town line. All of these required more people, more equipment, bigger equipment, etc. And the, the, the town grew, um, not so much in size of land, but in size of services. And we are what we are today. Um, yeah, you see some very nice equipment here. It's, it's the town, for a number of years, the highway department um, was living with old stuff. Well, we've the town and through 
various grants, etc. We've got some nice new equipment. We want to take care of it. And that's where we are today. So I, I guess I have to go back to when I first started and when I came to introduce myself to all of the employees here and when I uh, walked into the trailers, which was the uh, admin place, and then I saw the break room and uh, I was concerned immediately about the conditions and my concern was, number one, the health of the employees as well as, um, gate, you know, how do we entice an employee to work in a setting like, like this? Because um, when I got here, the 30-year-old trailers that were, we bought when they were used um, were not in good shape. You could walk in, you could immediately smell the mold. You knew that there was issues there. Um, so one of the good things that happened when um, ARPA, those funds that came from the, the, um, the federal government to support communities who had lost revenue due to COVID, um, there was money available for us to at least renovate those trailers. So they put new windows, new heating and cooling system. So uh, you can, we can make those steps to help with morale, but there are so many other aspects in a DPW department. Um, the, the safety issue is a concern for me. Um, it's, an, it's an older building and we just want to make sure that the employees are safe in a surrounding like this. Um, but they need to have a healthy place to work, no matter whether it's the garage, whether it's outside, whether it's washing the trucks, um, some of the things that we can't do uh, really to help preserve our, our equipment, um, but also make it better for the employees who are doing this type of work. Employee morale is a big one. How would you like to work someplace where you've got, like I said, 15, 20 people sharing one bathroom? and? That's, that's extremely demoralizing. Uh, just imagine if you had a house of, or apartment, maybe an apartment maybe is the best, the best way to say it, where you, sh where you share one bathroom. You know, it, it, there's just a lot of, in, in, not just inconveniences, but demoralizing to the employees. When you are happy to go to work because you've got a nice facility that at least meets your minimum needs, it's much easier to go to work and you're more happy to work there. Um, there are no, I know there are no, there are no female, um, DPW workers besides the office staff, but what if that happened, what happens? They would all, sh right now, they would all share the same bathroom, just like the office workers and the DPW workers do. Um, I'm not going to say that the new bathroom wouldn't be unisex by any stretch, um, but at least you would have some kind of demarcation where you would have a male and female area so that everybody would have their own appropriate privacy. And I mean, just imagine 15, 20 people sharing one bathroom in a house. That's essentially what you have today. Like there's one urinal and one toilet. So you know, that's, that's what we have today. I'm not gonna go beyond, expand beyond that because you can just imagine how inconvenient that is. I'll give an example with the break room, you know, you, you can't, again, that's an old trailer and it wasn't a place when our employees were plowing at night and having to rest during certain periods during the storm. Um, it wasn't a healthy place, you know, you, the, the rodents, you know, things like that, that in any type of old building, but certainly a building that's not meant to be permanent, it's 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 going to be a bigger battle, and so that that's where my concerns are. But I I think uh, we just that's got to be a it's for me it's a big part of the focus for a new facility. One of the problems is a lot of equipment has to be stored outside. It'll start, they're all diesels, but you just can't get into a diesel, start the engine, and drive away. They're cold, especially if it's sub-zero. They've got to warm up for 10, 15 minutes. 
Right now, all the equipment won't fit in this facility. The vac truck um, is stored into the sewer shed, but it only fits in part way. It doesn't fit all the way in. In the winter, they have to drain it and winterize it, just like you would if you had a mobile home and put, put antifreeze in all your lines, because it's a lot of water. And the downside of that is that is stored outside because it doesn't fit in a garage and it doesn't fit fully into any space because it's so tall and long. And if in the middle of the winter somebody gets a sewer back up, well, they now have to dewinterize that truck, put all the plugs back into it, fill it full of water, haul it out to the job. And if some poor person is sitting there with a the backup, it's a kind of a silly comment, but it's absolutely true. You're on a sewer line. The sewer's backing up into your cellar, but people upstream don't care. They're still flushing their toilets, so you're, you're getting, unfortunately, flooded more. And by the time the sewer truck gets there and gets addressed because of all the winterizing, it could be several hours. In the meantime, you're suffering. Whereas if the truck was stored inside in a weather-controlled area, <clears throat> the people come in, ready to go, jump in, and it's a matter of probably an hour as opposed to several. So there's, there's one, that's just one example. As maintenance-wise, things are cramped. It would be much. It'll be much more efficient to get parts, store parts, find things, organize, work on things. Things will be inside where they're warm in the winter, where you can get them going. Right now, when they put all the equipment that they can fit in a garage, and you've got a dump truck in a back corner, and you need a dump truck in the winter or any 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 time of the year to get out. Sometimes you've got to move four or five pieces of equipment to get that one piece out that you need. Well, you're, you're just wasting in fuel and, and, and people hours because you're trying to get the dump truck out that's in a back corner or a tractor or whatever it might be that's blocked by the other vehicles in the way. Almost nothing in this facility is handicap accessible. If somebody wants to come in and talk to an office worker, they can't go into the offices because they're all stairs. They're, they're trailers and they've got stairs going into them. Um, and you don't need to be necessarily handicap accessible in a wheelchair, but if you've got, face it, have you got a lot of older people, myself included by any stretch, and going up and down stairs for a lot of steps, not stairs, but, but steps up for a lot of the people is not so much um, impossible, but inconvenient. Whereas you just walk into a door and you walk into an office area, we have no reception area for any people to come in and talk to the, uh, townspeople, the, the, the uh, secretaries or the uh, DPW director, if they have a concern or want something, got a question about something, they call them on the phone. A lot of people like to talk in person. And it's sometimes that's not exactly convenient the way the system is set up right now. There is no office area except for the trailers. The feasibility committee was fantastic, representatives from the town, and there's a lot of skill set in Hadley for these projects, and I'm just, um, I'm I'm hoping people show up at special town meeting so that they can support this schematic design so we can keep them keep this going and be ready when the funding's there. We've done so many other projects in town, the senior center, the library, the fire station, the schools, um, and it's time now that we focused on the DPW. Mm -hmm.